Cinematic Kitchen, a new segment on Salami TV where I teach you how to cook the Granny May way. So come on into my kitchen and I'll show you how to cook it. Come on. I might even give you a little bit of moonshine. Of course, they told me I can't drink that much while I'm on that air. Yeah. y'all it's candy cane i'm feeling in for granny may today she's kind of under the weather well you know how she is so um i'm sort of filling in for her so that i can make sure she don't lose her job so uh, she already had everything planned out to show y'all how to do country style steak so here i have it on the cutting board all ready to go what we're going to do is we're going to cut the bone out of this. Now you can use any kind of cut of steak that you can afford to use. So this steak here has a bone in it, but we've got to cut that out before we can beat it. You have to beat your meat, you know. Okay, now to tenderize this, a lot of y'all know what this is. It is a meat tenderizer. And I use that sometimes. But, oh, let me pour me just a little bit of shine. Now, she, Mama's not the only one who likes a little shine. But I like mine with the twisted lime. Smooth. All right. But the way Mama and Grandmama always did it was they took a bottle. You know, soda bottles and beer bottles and whatever, they had more than one life. They would tenderize meat with it. Very simple. You can do this with steak or you can do this with uh, liver. Anything that needs to be tenderized. And look how that, that cooks that meat. doing it like this. Well, you know what no meat tenderizer was. Turn it over to The more you hit it, the more tender it's going to be when you fry it up. Now, if anybody remembers that, y'all need to leave a comment on this video. Y'all remember seeing anybody do this. hit it hard because you want to cut through that meat. You hear it? It's hitting that, that uh, cutting board back there. Mama had her apron on and I couldn't get it off of her. She could get to be a mean drunk sometime. <sighs> All right. Now you take that knife and you cut this in smaller pieces. You don't want huge pieces for this. Wash our hands, get all that old meat stuff on. Okay. Whew. Okay. Now I'm going to salt and pepper the meat. Uh, you want to put your, your salt and pepper next to your meat and not in your flour. It's where it keeps the flavor next to the meat. Okay. Now you just work that around in there. Then we're just going to take and roll it nice and good. Shake the excess off because you don't want that getting down in your grease and causing a mess. Make sure it's good and covered. Take it off. 
Okay, I got Mama's biggest wrought iron skillet over there getting hot. She uses cottonseed oil. I just paint up oil myself usually. But Mama, she just loves the cottonseed oil. Let's go over to the to the stove and we're gonna fry this stuff up. Come on. So now I grease this wooden hot. So now we're gonna start putting our steak in there. See, it's already starting to bubble up. You know, this is sirloin steak here, but you can use any kind of steak, whatever you know is in your budget. Mama even likes to make a lot of deer steak. See, as it fries, that meat will start to shrink up. until it starts to develop a crust under there. Otherwise, when you turn it over, it will pull that breaded off. And it's just be loose in the frying pan, burning everything up. See how pretty that is looking? So nice. Since my frying pan is bigger than my bun, I'll have to continue to move this meat around so that it all has a chance to get brown. This is our comfort food here in the South. Anything that's fried up. Everything's all cooked. Then you ready to uh, make your gravy. Turn your grease down a little bit. Don't want it too hot. And you're going to keep all that that stuff that's in the bottom of the pan. You want to kind of rake that around because that's going to make, help make your gravy. And then you're going to take your leftover flour. And you want to cook it till it turns brown. It gives it kind of a nutty flavor. When you let that flour turn brown. And the French call that a roux or something. Now in this stage, it will not stick. It will burn, but it will not stick. Pour some water on it. And stir. See that? That's becoming brown gravy for your steak. And you have to kind of play with this and there ain't no cut and dry recipe for it. 
You don't want to put too much water or it'll be too soupy. Not enough and it'll be too pasty. But you want to stir it and keep stirring it. And not everybody likes this country style steak down in the gravy. So I've kept some of it out for the folks around here who like it without gravy on it. But then again, there's folks that like the gravy, so I'm taking some parts and putting in there. Let that simmer real good. You'll have to salt and pepper it to your taste. You want to taste that gravy. Mm. That's just about right. Because the flour was self rising. Keep it adding water until you get it just the right consistency and let it simmer. Turn your heat way down and let that simmer until you get either your rice or your uh, mashed potatoes ready. So here we go y'all. We got our country style steak ready. Over here we've got country style steak in the gravy. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on a plate. Mmm, mmm, that steak there is going to be something nice and tender. It's been, been simmering in the, that gravy. Get a piece of this here. And like I said, it would be good. Thing like mashed potatoes, the rice. Mmm. When you tenderize it like that, it is so melting your mouth tender. Mmm. Take a slice of tomato. Look at that tomato. It looks like it ought to be over at my house. Tell me what that looks like.